Somebody was tired this morning. Did I get any calls last night? No. Were there any messages on the machine? No. You're sure? No calls, no messages, I'm sure. Who are you so hot and bothered about hearing from anyway? Does their name start with K and end with N? Never mind. Did to take your St. John's Award? The part of Dr. Joe Scanlon is now being played by David Gale. Close alert. Neil can't find his new cargo pants. He's up. I'm raring to go. Let's be first one online for the Wild Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> He's not excited about this movie or anything, is he? Well, he's already psyched about seeing the sequel next summer. Next summer? Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. That seems, um, so far away. Well, it is. So let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? Okay. Thanks. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. Neil's recurrence does not mean he's down for the count. You know, you always know exactly what to say to make me feel better. That's just one of the perks of having a doctor around the house. I'm glad you're here. Me too. What was stolen? Victor's floppy disks. One of them had an interactive game on it. Which we think was Victor's way of communicating with whoever he's involved with. Look, does anyone else have access to the lighthouse besides you two? No one. And I had a whole new security system put in after Julie and Greg Cooper broke in. I set the alarm, but it was never tripped. And there was no sign of forced entry. So whoever got in had a key and knew how to deactivate the system. Sounds like Victor. Or someone Victor sent. Do you think you could dust for prints? Yeah, sure, but uh, you might want to hear what I have to say first. You alive? I don't know. You better check my pulse. Yeah, you're alive. <sighs> How was Christina? Oh, shh. She's asleep. Finally. I was up and down with her all night. Not that I'm complaining. Well, I guess uh, red eyes and dark circles, it's all part of being a mom. Right. Exactly. I don't really have dark circles, do I? <laughs> shh. shh. Uh, nobody was there. Oh. Wait, why are you dressed so early and so very nicely? Well, I got a big day today. I got to talk to the salespeople about how the Serena line is doing, and then Serena has been hawking me about getting a poster to 98 degrees. 98 degrees. She needs the poster because when they come to town, she wants to get them all to autograph it for her. I've been knowing that for a while now. Okay. Plus, I want to get a new VCR so I can uh, look at the Portizo tape. Why? Why don't you just send out the old one to get fixed? Ah, you kidding? That would take too long. I want to see this tape. <sighs> you certainly are obsessed with the darn thing. Lucy, I'm curious. Aren't you? No, no. Not interested at all. I've had it up to here with Bordiso. In fact, I just want to forget about him for good. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen, because every time we turn around, there he is. Now, if you don't want to see the tape, okay. But I'm going to look at that tape today. Credit card statement for Bill Dyson. Notice the circled item. Dyson bought a one-way ticket to Rome. Victor's in Italy? Well, that means now we can track his movements. No, afraid not. The card was canceled. Why? Well, who canceled it? There was a bank in Switzerland that transferred funds to cover the balance. There was no forwarding address. Wait a minute. This ticket could be a decoy to throw us off the track. 
Why don't we try and find out if Victor or Bill Dyson actually went to Rome? Now, don't the G7 countries use computers so they can record all the arrivals and departures? Not a problem. I can access that through your computer. Let's do it. If you're here to try and explain yourself, don't waste your breath. Five minutes. Come on, Karen. There is nothing you can say to justify what you've done. Maybe I went too far when I took that apartment across the street, but I did it to protect you. Protect me? You spied on us through a telescope. To catch Joe in the act, to stop him from lying to you. It was your way of coming between us, Frank. No. What I did was try to help. You knew when this place was empty, so you could use your spare keys and let yourself in. <laughs> you made those sex calls on our phone to make Joe look like some kind of pervert. That is crazy. You were at the studio the day Joe and I shot Lucy's infomercial. The next morning, I found those red pennies in Joe's car. Hey, don't lay that on me. Stop lying. You stole Joe's car keys while we were shooting and planted that underwear. No way. I didn't. Oh, my God. When I caught you with that prostitute, the one Joe supposedly solicited, she was looking for you. You must have used her to set Joe up. Listen to yourself. This is nuts. It's about you not wanting to face the truth. The reason Joe was at the Port Charles Grill the night he got arrested was because you made the date to meet him there. But when Joe arrived, you conveniently had car trouble. Joe is an addict. He's out of control, and that is what's real here. The hell he is. You figured he would wait for you, so you sent that woman into the bar with a bogus story about how she's stranded without any money. You knew Joe would offer to help her out. There's no getting through to you, is there? You want so much to trust Joe that you will jump at any excuse you find. I'm afraid you're in for a big letdown, Karen. Mm. Joe's not going to change. Get ready, Frank. Your world's about to come crashing down just like Joe's and mine did. See how you like it. Hey. Mm. Christina's been sleeping for a while. I think you should go upstairs and go to bed. Okay. I can't do that because the minute my head hits the pillow, that sound acts as her wake-up call. <laughs> I'm glad you're taken to this mommy thing. <laughs> I sure am. Well, that's good. And I'll tell you something that agrees with you, because you've never looked prettier. <laughs> now, I'm going to try and get home as soon as possible and relieve you, okay? Okay. Okay. something with those tapes that DV sent. And so I just need you to just be still just a little bit and keep yourself happy. And um, I'll take care of it, because I don't want Scott to see those. It would, it would really hurt him so much. OK, can you do that for Mommy? Oh, boy. OK, I'll be right back. Hello. Lucy, hi. It's Julie. Julie? Devlin. Julie Devlin? Yes. I'm trying to find Lee. By any chance, is he there with no. Scott? No, no, no. He, it, no, he's not. He isn't. No. I, I wanted to tell him the news. What news? Chris and I are engaged. Chris Ramsey, Chris? That's the one. We're going to be married as soon as we can. Oh, wow, how great. I, I didn't even know you two were in love. Oh, very much. We want to make it official and even uh, start a family. You're going to start a family while you're in the nut house? While, while you're at Ferncliff? Oh, I can't wait. Well, you understand how that is, don't you? Especially now. Chris tells me that you have a new baby. Um, yes. Scott and I are fostering Christina. Christina. What a sweet name. I'll bet she's sweet, too. 
I, I really envy you, Lucy. Oh, is that, is that her? Is that, is that Christina? Yeah, it, it sure is. Um, she needs me to go right now to take, take care of her. You know how babies are. I can't really keep her waiting. Well, but, but she isn't sick or anything, is she? No, no, she's absolutely fine. She just needs her mommy. Um, listen, I'll give Lee your message. Her mommy? You better take good care of her, Lucy. I want my baby in perfect condition when I get her back. Hey, you. Are you okay? Did that phone call upset you as much as it did me? Oh, boy. Don't worry. Don't you worry your pretty little head at all. You will never have to even see that awful woman. Never. Anyone else here? No. Neil's out with Mary. Why? We have a big problem. Karen spotted me last night in the window of the apartment we rented. Frank, how could you let her see you? It happened. Well, OK? Wh why didn't you tell me about this? Because I wasn't sure that Karen would put the whole thing together, and I wanted to do some damage control. And? She read me the riot act for breaking up her and Joe. Beautiful. Beautiful. Does she know about me? No. Oh, well, thank God for that. Now, I wouldn't be thanking anyone just yet. You did make those phone calls to Karen from the classic cat. Where's the proof it was me? Look, look, you have to help me to keep Karen from getting to Joe before I can change her mind about what happened. Forget it. Look, I, I, am, I am sorry you got caught. But I'm not going to stick out my neck and risk losing Joe if I don't have to. The only reason you have Joe to begin with is because he's angry at Karen for doubting him. But that is about to change. She is on her way to GH right now to tell Joe all about Big Bad Frank. And I guarantee you there's going to be a hell of an apology in there somewhere. How long do you think they'll stay apart once she does that? Come on. We have to get to GH. Okay. Frank was behind the whole thing. I mean, he did this to his own brother. So you came here today to break it to Joe? I guess I'm relieved he's in surgery. Gives me a chance to hash it out with somebody as wise and wonderful as you first. Thanks, sweetheart, but you do sound awfully worried. Well, considering I assumed the worst about the man I was going to marry, yeah, I'm worried. I wouldn't blame Joe if he never spoke to me again. Maybe you're just being a little extreme. No, Frank started this. But I've been willing to believe the worst about Joe. All you can do is just be honest. And hope he understands. Hello, Lucy. Told Scott about our secret yet? No, I haven't, and I don't intend to. Uh, he's gonna find out when he sees our little home movie. He won't see that tape or any other tapes. I destroyed all the copies. Sorry, missed one. Lucy and I get it on. Oh, and what's this? The sequel. Lucy and I get it on. Again. Our very own homage to Pamela and Tommy Lee, eh? Oh, no. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Oh, I know. I'll call my very best friend for advice. Hey, girlfriend. Felicia? No, silly, it's me, your best friend, Julie. Julie. Oh, oh, well, okay, then. I, I guess you'll have to do, because I just have to tell somebody about the secret I have. Oh, you mean the secret about you and D.V. doing the horizontal mambo while you were in New York? Do you have to put it that way? Take it from a true friend, Lucy. You have to tell Scott the truth. Otherwise, people will suffer. Well, but they'll suffer if I tell the truth. If you lie, you risk losing everything. Do you want to end up a prisoner of your mistakes like me? 
Oh, you mean locked in a padded cell with no access to pedicures and no trips to the shopping mall? Well, then tell Scott the truth. Don't keep it a secret. Did somebody say something about a secret? Lucy, she's under the delusion that lying will save her. Well, isn't it different? I mean, lying is different than just not telling. I think, right? Come on, Lucy, we've been down this road many times before. You gotta fess up and tell the secret. You don't understand. He's gonna find out anyway. Better tell him. It's better if he hears from you. Tell the truth. I don't think I can. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. I'll tell. I'll tell. I'll tell. Bill Dyson went through customs in Rome. So Victor did use his plane ticket. And according to this, he was detained in customs because of a fake passport. Who are you calling? Yeah, I'd like the American Embassy in Rome, please. There's no telling what Victor got himself into. Kevin, Victor's been working his whole life undercover. I'm sure he can take care of himself. Yes. All right, thank you. Keep trying. Just can't get through right now. Look, I've got to take this. Uh, I'll get in touch with my contacts at the WSB. See what they can tell me about Victor's arrest. Meanwhile, you guys keep me posted. Thanks, we will. Okay. I'm gonna kill Victor for this. <sighs> Kevin, give him a break. You know Victor, he's... adventurous. I just got Victor back after all those years of not having a father. I'm not about to lose him now. What are you gonna do? I'm going to Rome. I'm going to. We're on the next flight to Rome. Great. I can be packed and ready to go in about a half an hour. Listen, I'm sorry that we need to postpone our trip to Palau. Oh, come on, Kevin. How can I go enjoy myself somewhere snorkeling with Victor missing? So, what's our plan of attack? Well, first off, Obviously, we have to stop at customs in Rome because they're the people holding Victor. Next, the American Embassy. Mm -hmm. See if we can get this whole passport thing straightened out. And then, try and convince Victor to come back to Port Charles. And then, can we uh, make our own version of Roman Holiday? You are, after all, just as stunning as Audrey Hepburn. And you are just as dashing as Gregory Peck. Now, this is starting to sound like an adventure. I'm counting on it. I heard you were looking for me. Thanks for coming by. I don't have long. What's up? I know you haven't been lying to me, Joe, and that you were set up. Well, what made you change your mind? Must have been some convincing evidence to get you to do 180. It was a telescope. Somebody was using it in the apartment across from mine to spy on us. We were being watched? By who? Frank. He was the one that made the calls to the 900 number that planted the woman's panties in your car. He even paid that hooker to set you up. I mean, Frank is responsible for everything. Dr. Reitzel, 3288. Dr. James Reitzel. Just get him up to the sixth floor. What are you going to say to Karen? No, it's not what, it's how. I've got to give the performance of a lifetime. Okay, there she is. Here goes. Karen. I have to tell Scott the truth.
Scott? Scott, is that you? When were you going to tell me? Next week on Good Morning America, from the White House to the Big Apple, apartment shopping for Hillary Clinton, plus financial makeovers. That's next week on Good Morning America. Catch up with the happenings at ABC Daytime. Read the daily scoop at ABC.com.